Today Baba is underlining the virtue of honesty and Baba says that those children who are honest with Baba they stay safe from the attacks of Maya. So although Maya would come but it cannot hurt your intellect because you will be safe if you are honest with Baba. Now you see to understand this you need to think about a situation where you go to the doctor and you have a stomach ache and the doctor asks you what have you eaten or what have you done which you think has caused the stomach ache and you don't tell the doctor the truth okay you are saying no I didn't do anything like that I didn't eat anything like that and then the doctor prescribes you some medicine based on whatever you told then will you have faith in the medicine Will you think that the medicine will treat you? Because you see, you have lied about your condition. You have lied about what is it that you have done. So when the doctor gives you medicine, you know that that medicine is based on incomplete information. So you have not given full information. So you don't have faith that the medicine will work. Because you know that the doctor doesn't know your story. And he doesn't know what you've done. And probably you won't even take the medicine. And uh, this is why you see, when Baba gives us uh, you know, when Baba gives us so many methods to heal ourselves, to get back to our place of power and, you know, spiritual strength. Why don't we take those medicines that Baba gives us? Because I think that, you know, I have, Baba doesn't know me. Baba doesn't know my life. Baba doesn't know what I've done. Baba doesn't know what is ailing me. Baba doesn't know what's in my heart. And that is why you don't take what Baba is giving you. And this is a very subtle um, connection. And therefore, you know, it is said that when you come to Baba, you must submit your whole life history. So whatever you remember of this life, what sins you've committed that you remember, whatever you think you did and that's gnawing at your heart. And at least in this life, we don't know about previous lives. We don't remember, but at least this life, Whatever has been your journey and whatever sins you can remember, you must give it in writing to Baba. And then you know when, when you give it completely to Baba and then Baba tells you something, then Baba speaks the murli, then you feel that you know the one who knows you is speaking the murli. And then you pay attention to the solutions that Baba is giving. Yes. And although, you know, it's not like what Baba is teaching you works better when Baba knows you. But this is your psychology. <laughs> Anyways, you know, if you did what Baba said, you would get the same result. But you won't do it until and unless you give, you are honest with Baba. 
and when you are honest with baba you have this feeling that you know the one who knows me in and out that one is speaking the murli and that one is giving me and you see uh, baba speaks the murli but that murli whether you think it's a general uh, literature or you think it's personally spoken to you that depends on how honest you are with baba because when you are honest with baba then you feel that baba is speaking this murli for me and when you are not honest with baba you don't feel that baba is speaking this murli for me you feel that you know this is today's murli but when you have that honesty then you know you know that baba is speaking to you just like you see if there is somebody who knows something about you and then they are discussing something yes which uh, which may or may not be about you but you think that you know they are discussing about you you take it personally why because you know that they know about you and if somebody doesn't know anything about you and they are speaking exactly the same thing that corresponds to your situation but you would say no but they they are not talking about me because they don't know that this is my situation so whether you take the murli personally or you don't take the murli personally has a lot to do with how honest and open you are with baba and when you have that honesty and that uh, openness with baba and you tell your truth to baba about this whole life then you know when baba speaks the murli you take it very personally you know that you have a personal relationship just like you see if a speaker is speaking in the crowd but that speaker has a relationship with somebody in the crowd then you know that person who is sitting in the crowd will feel that they is they are speaking to me personally even if it's a you know whole crowd hearing that thing so baba also says that this is how you know you have because baba is speaking to every child and it is wonderful how through one murli baba can speak to every child <laughs> it is amazing it's only something that baba can do but whether you get what baba is giving you it depends on how honest you are with baba and when you take that personally then you know you also take it as a challenge that baba has spoken this to me today so i have to do this and then you do it and that builds strength in you and you see this is why uh, baba it is the same murli for everybody but everybody imbibes it differently because when you are honest your heart is open then baba's directions enter your heart but if your heart is locked or closed because you are hiding some secrets inside then baba's light doesn't enter your heart so it all depends on you because the light is there baba is there but whether you open your heart or not is important and um, and also i think you know it's very important because um, i i have understood this uh, this i don't know whether it's some psychological law or something but i feel that you know you cannot embrace yourself until there is one another who embraces you as you are you know you cannot you cannot really love yourself until and unless somebody else accepts you totally and when somebody else accepts you totally 
despite who you are, you know, knowing everything about you, it becomes very easy to accept yourself. And uh, ha have you felt this? So, you know, I remember there was, when I was a little child at that time, I made a mistake in school. And when I came back home, then I was very burdened by that mistake. But then my logic father, he insisted, uh, he could know that there's something in my heart and then he kept, you know, <laughs> kept, kept, you know, going around and around me and then he said, he made me, you know, talk. And then I said whatever, which was the, whatever was the mistake. And then after that, he said, oh, it's such a little thing. It's okay. Don't worry. If something happens, we both will deal with it. Now you just don't worry. Leave it. And then, you know, that thing, which was such a big thing for me, it became very small. It became like it was nothing. Absolutely nothing. And this is the power of honest sharing, you know. And... I don't think, you know, with even my logic father, I could share everything because, <laughs> you know, human beings can't share everything with anybody because whenever you share everything, that's then somewhere, you know, somebody will judge you. And because every human is judgmental, whether they are in the role of parents or siblings or friends or you know, these days I feel that there are no honest friendships. And uh, even friends are trying to pretend before friends and give an impression of who they are not. And uh, this is why, you know, this subject of honesty with Baba is very important because when you, the, Baba is the only one you can be absolutely honest with. And Baba knows your whole journey anyways. So uh, if you speak it out, Baba is not shocked or surprised. <laughs> yes, so when you bear your heart to Baba, then you know your heart becomes really empty and you A, you can draw the light and might from Baba and B, when you have this honest sharing with Baba, then you are able to embrace yourself, you know, with in your present condition. And when you are able to do that, then you can change yourself. Because although it sounds contradictory, acceptance is the first step to change. You cannot change that which you resist, that which you deny. You can only change that which you accept totally, that which you are okay with. Because, you know, change is a very, very soft process. And until and unless you stop being hard with yourself, you cannot change. So, Baba says that, you have to be very honest with me and then you know you have that relationship with me where you get what i'm telling you you understand the morally personally you follow my directions you become obedient you draw the light and might from me and also you know you you are ready for change and then you know with doing what baba says you become very powerful and when there is strength then maya comes but it doesn't defeat you but when there is no strength and you see uh, when we come to baba as soon as we come to baba the boxing with maya starts yes this is a very interesting law so Maya starts boxing as soon as you come to Baba. And Baba says that in that boxing, whether you will, you will be hurt or you will be, you know, left unscratched, 
that depends on the strength and resilience that you build and the foundation of that strength is relationship with Baba and relationship cannot happen without honesty. So until and unless you have sharing with Baba, honesty with Baba. So how many of you have just one sided relationship with Baba? Just Baba is telling you this, 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 this and you are not sharing anything with Baba. So if you are not, if you have a one sided relationship, have you ever seen one sided relationships work? They never work. <laughs> so a relationship means two sided. So you have to, you know, you, you must, you must make it a habit to, you know, to write to Baba. Yes, if you are comfortable, you can write and give it to Baba through the Nimit. So you can write to me and then that is writing to Baba. Or you can, you know, you could just write it to Baba and burn that also. That's also okay. But you must have this sense, this practice of, you know, writing to Baba and about your past, about what things gnaw at your heart and every day also, you know, you must write to Baba your daily chart, whatever, whatever sharing you do with humans, you must do with Baba first and more than humans, you must share to Baba. And when you do that, then in that relationship, you draw power from Baba. And when you have power, then Maya comes, but it's not able to hurt you. And who does Maya hurt? Maya hurts the intellect. Yes, so just like somebody who hurts your body, hurts you physically. But Maya, when it hurts you, it doesn't hurt you physically. It hurts your intellect. And our intellect is very precious. Because our intellect is the organ that discerns, decides, it's the basis of all our decisions and actions. And if that, in, if, the, and if that intellect is hurt, then what will be the quality of my choices and actions? So I know that this is not good for me, but I'll still do it. Because the intellect is hurt or Maybe I'll not even have the discernment of good and bad, right and wrong anymore. And have you seen that there are many children and you know this Brahmin life is a very interesting journey because in this journey doesn't matter how long you stayed or you know how long you um, you you, become, you are a Brahmin. What matters is whether you survive until the end. <laughs> so that is the interesting thing because you see the whole crux is Antmate Sogati. So if you are there in the end, you reach your final destination. If not, doesn't matter because you see just like in cricket, you know, what matters is the final ball. <laughs> Similarly, here also the final act matters. So this is why, you know, it's about surviving until the end. And if your intellect is weak, then, you know, even if you have seen people 10 years in Gyan, 20 years in Gyan, they just die one day. Die means not physically. They are no longer a Brahmin and they don't read the Murli anymore. They don't have, they don't have any Brahmin actions anymore. The no discipline, nothing. It just finishes. Why? Because this journey is all about saving yourself from Maya. And Maya will, Maya just, Maya just kills the intellect. And it makes you do all un-Brahmin acts. So you will do all of that if, if you don't take care of that. And how do you take care? Not by thinking, oh, Maya shouldn't, you know, attack me and I should be safe and this and that. So 
think about a warrior he is in the battlefield and just thinking i shouldn't get hurt i shouldn't get hurt will he not get hurt by thinking i shouldn't get hurt no he has to be ready in a war it's your readiness that matters and how do you become ready when you are honest with baba and in that honesty in that relationship you draw a light and might enough within you then maya will not be able to deceive you and you know in my journey i have understood that sometimes uh, there are times when i have not been able to discern maya logically so you know something is happening and i'm not able to really know that um i'm not able to really recognize that this is a trap of maya but somehow or the other it could i don't fall into that trap so you know it's like baba saved me in many situations and how do you get saved that is also because of this you know this relationship with baba sometimes you are able to discern maya sometimes you are able to act very you know wisely because you understand this is maya you understand you know this is what's going on and this is this is how it's happening but sometimes you don't understand but it just doesn't happen like that and you you are able to come out of that situation yes so let's say somebody is giving you an offer which is very lucrative but they are trying to deceive you and your logical mind says and everybody around you also says this is such a great offer and you know this is baba's god send and uh, you get a, this kind of an offer in lifetime but then somehow it doesn't work out and then you think that you know and you feel good about it you feel like you know uh, it's good that it didn't happen and 5 years later you understand that the one who took that offer is in a big mess right now <laughs> and these are the things uh, and i have felt this many times i cannot share many instances because there are lots of you know <laughs> things that are involved but but you see that there are many times that i have felt that you even when i'm not able to discern with my logical mind and i'm just about to fall into that trap <laughs> baba will sometimes just sweep me from there and not let me fall into it so this also happens and um and this is the, and usually with attractions this happens you know somebody attracts you with some position some something it happened in office many times it happened in many things many times so baba says that when you have this honest relationship with baba then baba comes to your rescue also and you will stay safe and that is very interesting and otherwise you know every time maya deceives you your intellect is wounded and with that wounded intellect you take very bad karmic steps which lead you to doom <laughs> so that is the that is the thing so this is one thing then baba is talking about uh, new knowledge that that new knowledge which baba is giving and baba says with this new knowledge uh, with this raj yoga you become the king of kings and uh, you see whenever there is some knowledge then and you see this knowledge is so new that nobody has ever studied it so you see it's only at this time that baba comes and gives this knowledge and do you understand when something is new knowledge then it becomes it it requires a lot of effort to imbibe that knowledge yes so let's say you you are learning a new form of art you know maybe martial arts or this or that you have to be very attentive because that's something that you have not done earlier and it requires new practices new everything and uh, 
you don't know what matters in that you know so you have to be pay very good attention to the guru who is teaching you and uh, baba says that this is a knowledge which no guru can even teach you and do you know why baba speaks the murli directly to us even today you know although we interpret the murli still the first thing that's recommended is read the murli or listen to the murli because you know the murli is the the murli is spoken by baba and nobody else can get it the way baba is actually giving it absolutely nobody can give it get it so baba says this is why you have to pay a lot of attention to this murli and if you don't pay attention then this new knowledge you cannot imbibe and what is new about this knowledge so you see that baba gives the knowledge of this self yes and did you know yourself as a pure peaceful powerful loveful blissful being of light <laughs> eternal star so did you did you know yourself like that earlier yes but do you still know yourself like that <laughs> because you see this is knowledge and knowledge has to be imbibed yes and i remember you know there was this one uh, this one child and uh, they studied in school that when you know uh, when water evaporates on something above when water is you know uh, boiling on something above then the the thing that is underneath is also getting cooked so that they studied in school but when they came home they saw their mother and the mother what she was doing is she was making sabji and she had put this um, plate on the on the kadhai and that plate she had put some water on and because of that the 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 sabji did not burn it, in the lower you know in that kadhai so then the child said i never thought that what i studied in school can have this application <laughs> but you are applying it even without studying so the mother said yes i didn't do go to school and you don't need to go to school for everything you learn these things at home also so i learned it from my mother so what i'm trying to say is you know sometimes you have knowledge but you don't really apply it and we have this knowledge this very powerful knowledge of who i am but do i imbibe that point of pe- that piece of knowledge and do i look at myself like that as an eternal uh, you know respectable null, pure peaceful deserving point of light <laughs> do i look at myself like that do i look at myself as a worthy soul or do i look at myself as my as the way i used to look at myself earlier so this is the first point of new knowledge then you see the whole world says god is great god is very high up above and you are low and miserable and you are lowly and you know we are all sinners and god is Uh, we can't even reach god god will never cast an eye on us and baba says that i am your parent teacher satguru i am the one you have all relationships with you are the one who has a right to my inheritance do you think about baba like that a do you think do you know that baba is the almighty and the purifier so do you think about baba as the purifier do you think about baba as the almighty do you think about baba as the ocean of peace love and do you think that baba himself says that you are the most deserving and he is always with you because you know even with baba the relationship that i feel with baba 
may not be very close maybe because of lack of honesty but in any case if it's not that close then i know that baba is my parent teacher satguru but i don't have that intoxication that comes with uh, that comes to someone whose god is the, whose parent is god <laughs> yes so uh, the, so you know if somebody's parent is the chief minister how do they feel but your parent is god <laughs> but do you feel like that so why is that not there because we have not imbibed that knowledge and you see baba says you are not bhagats you are my children and what kind of intoxication that child has whose father is the supreme parent supreme teacher satguru so baba says imbibe this knowledge then baba gives knowledge about our whole journey baba says you are not who you are today you are a deity soul you have been a you know you have ruled over this world for 2500 years and then you have built the biggest temples and you did all this bhakti you wrote the scriptures and now you belong to baba so do you think about your history like that and then baba says you are the one who is going to sit on the throne tomorrow so do you think about your future like that think about a prince who knows he is going to be the king tomorrow so does he so what kind of training he gives himself because he knows he has to handle that tomorrow so do you have that so baba has given us the knowledge of the whole drama and specially my part in the drama but have i imbibed it yes so this is about keeping the knowledge in awareness so knowledge we've got and baba says this new knowledge can change you from a human to a deity but when does it change us if the knowledge becomes my awareness and is the knowledge that baba has given me my awareness and then you see baba doesn't only give the knowledge of the truth but baba gives the knowledge of yoga and you see in the name of yoga what nonsense are people doing <laughs> and then baba says what is yoga you consider yourself to be a soul and remember baba that's yoga yes people are dancing in the name of yoga people are exercising in the name of yoga but that's not yoga 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 is communion communion between the soul and baba and baba says that is raj yoga and i give you the knowledge of true yoga and everybody is know everybody knows the importance of yoga but they don't know what is yoga and then everybody knows the important of importance of virtues in life yes people say discipline is important punctuality is important but what is the main virtue the main virtue is purity and you see that's why and baba says when the mother virtue is not there then every other virtue is such a difficult virtue to imbibe because there is no purity discipline is so difficult because there is no purity being sweet is so difficult yes being not angry is so difficult but baba says that the first virtue is purity and we have that knowledge and then baba says instead of serving physical bodies you have to serve the soul first and what are people doing even as parents what are we doing we are serving the bodies yes give them good food give them good clothes send them off to good schools but what about the soul are you nurturing the soul yes i uh, and then all day you think what will happen to this child i don't know what will happen to them in future so what are you nurturing them with with power or with fear with worry 
So Baba says the first thing you do in order to serve somebody is give them, you know, spiritual sustenance. Good wishes, good feelings, give them the knowledge that I am giving you. Even if you can't give them the knowledge, at least with your knowledgeful, loveful, powerful actions, sustain them in the beginning. So Baba gives us the knowledge of true awareness, true yoga, true virtues, true seva. But only when we imbibe this and Baba says this one thing, if you completely imbibe, then you can change from a human to a deity. And of course, you know, everybody becomes who they become through knowledge. But nobody ever becomes a king by studying. <laughs> You become an IS by studying, you become a teacher, doctor, engineer by studying. But have you seen somebody become a king by studying? No. But Baba teaches us to be the king of kings. And Baba says only if you imbibe this knowledge, you will, you will become the king of kings. Okay. Om Shanti.